Welcome to episode 114 of the XRM Toolcast. In this episode, Scott and I speak with MVP Evan Fitzko on his new tool, Power Rolls, a Chromium extension that allows you to record your actions and determine what rights are required and create a role automatically for those rights or add them to an existing role. So a very awesome tool for developers and testers and admins alike. Um, last time I was on, it happened to be the Fudge episode where we talked about Fudge. Uh, this time we talked about sniffing with such wonderful quotes as sniffing anything in my book is great by Scott and it doesn't suck, it sniffs by myself. So if you don't care about roles that much, at least stay for the sniffing. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode of the XRM Toolcast. Me, your host, Daryl, always raising the bar, and Scott still green with envy of the 4th of July fireworks throw. Scott, how's it going? I'm good. Good, thanks, Daryl. Yes, happy 4th of yes. July. That's when we're recording this. Is, yes. Does green have like um, any significance? I, I, I Red and red and white and is is the kind of... And I'm just going with your hair. I'm just going with your yes, hair. Yes, I know. But still it, green. I mean, if I was going to be true 4th of July, I would have to, you know, go yes. full in the whole yes. stars and yeah. stripes thing. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we actually had a, a party at my house yesterday. I think we had like, oh, I think we had like 85 people show up, but uh, it was great. Um, and we had like a, a dress, a uh, attire contest. So who is the most quote, quote, patriotic? And I'm wearing like a tank top flag with uh, a, a sweatband, like red, white, and blue sweatband. And the only vote in the jar for the first hour of the party was not Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> not Daryl was the only vote, which I thought was hilarious. That someone yes. would write on yeah. not Daryl, put in, but A then I ended harsh. up winning. So too bad for too bad for them. Ah, so you showed them, yes, yeah. I think six <laughs> people voted, but anyway, it was. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, well, yes. I mean, I, it, it's the Euros, uh, obviously, the football. And, and so, you know, I really should be having the whole uh, England uh, colours. But, you know, we'll, we'll go with the, the Stars and Stripes for today. We'll, yeah. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, come on, England. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Just... I, I was actually watching a YouTube video of someone that was uh, learning the American rules football and uh, and. Uh, going through all the different positions and the different roles that people play and uh, trying to figure out, you know, how are they, are those like related to like soccer, or regular football roles or, or not? So, um, but, but roles, they're, they're pretty important, aren't they? I see we've done that. Yes, they are very, very important. <laughs> it can be even powerful sometimes, especially. Yeah, if, yeah definitely. Yeah. Depends on who you are, but absolutely. Um, <laughs> good, good, good segue. I like I that. was. I didn't know if you had anything planned, so I, I just came in my head, and so I went with it. So anyway, um, <laughs> our, <laughs> our And you topic, executed it beautifully. <laughs> you know, I'm smarter than I look, Scott. I'm smarter than I look. So uh, our, uh, our guest for today uh, is the creator of Power Rolls. Is Ivan Fickle, also known as the Dynamics Ninja. He's a Microsoft MVP, Dynamics 365 enthusiast, problem solver, and bedroom DJ. Welcome back to the show, Ivan Fickle. Ivan, how's it going? Hello, guys. Thanks. For Hi, Ivan. Hi. <laughs> it's really good to see you again. <laughs> the last time you were on the show, you did promise to remix our theme tune. So yes. I have a little bit of a bone to pick with you on that. Yes. H how's that coming exactly? Because you do owe us a remix. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we can do it, but <laughs> no, all right, okay. Always working <laughs> so, yeah. Rather than doing a remix, you've just been really busy with other things like writing this new tool that you've written. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, it, it was way before, but you know, the process of going to store, it is kind of hard and it goes back and forth until it's published. So yeah it, it it was made just before my holiday season but yeah it's published few, a few days ago just because of the certification process awesome and how is your have to ask how is your injury how is your arm is that all fully yeah. healed now yeah fully healed you can see right. the scar is there that's a pretty good scar wow yeah it is but but it's just fine. Uh, I was doing some crazy wakeboarding this holiday. So Good. yeah, it, it, it is tough, I think so. <laughs> so it's not, it's not good, it? you don't think, oh, maybe I should just hold back a bit in case I do something. Okay, you, you, you've got no problem about that. Yeah, but I'm, now I'm an Ironman, so <laughs> I don't oh. care. Are you doing an Ironman competition? 
No. I no. Have oh, but your Steve Ironman. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. All right. I got excited about people that are crazy doing <laughs> Ironman competitions. It's about crazy. <laughs> Uh, so basically what you're thinking now is because you've got iron in your arm it may makes you kind of invincible that's that's really that's your thought process there at, at least I like uh, it. that hand so yeah <laughs> stronger than ever before yes <laughs> i can feel it yeah no definitely you could be the yeah the, the Iron Man of the power platform world, definitely. You just need one of those cool, yeah, like, need, little need to arc the reactors in your, you know. <laughs> power Iron Man or something like that. Power Iron Man, yes. Dynamic yeah. Iron Man. I don't know. It's, um, nah. Dynamics is no, bad. We're not going to go down the MCU kind of uh, rabbit hole, are we? We, no. we could, because that could take for a very long time. And we would really, really get off topic from what we actually yes. came on the podcast to talk As to. As usual. Yes, totally. So let's let's actually go back on topic here. So we, <laughs> we, we brought you on to talk about power rolls. So uh, I, I looked at what this was. I looked at your two screenshots you have up there. Like, oh, that's all kind of interesting. Um, actually, no, it's three screenshots. I like three screenshots. I said, well, that looks like kind of a cool idea. So um, I haven't got a chance to play with it because it's so new. Um, and I was hoping to save myself some time. And, and that way I can learn along with the rest of our listeners about kind of what this tool is and how it works. So go ahead, Ivan, tell us, tell us what is Power Rolls and, and why would someone care to use it? What does, what does it do? I think that uh, we first need a background story about this one. Okay, so, awesome. Because it's uh, really interesting. The origin uh, story we're talking here. Yeah. This is it's still <laughs> on the MCU. So, we're still on the MCU theme, aren't we? Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm not going to leave it. I'm not going <laughs> to. So uh, I was attending a local user group, which is like uh, dynamics focused, uh, but most of the people come from the ERP world. Most of the sessions are always uh, business central or FNO and stuff like that. But I, I'm curious. I want to learn some new things and I attend those sessions. And because you're supporting the local stuff, so it's also nice to be there. And uh, they were talking about business central release. I don't know, wave something. And uh, one of the features was some kind of co-pilot for uh, BC. And uh, on off topic, they were talking about, do you know there is a permission set recorder there? I was like, hmm? permission set recorder. And mm -hmm. they showed up. So they did a comparison, the co-pilot one and that uh, permission recorder. And I was like, wow, they can record roles. And they did a quite small demo. I didn't uh, understand a lot of stuff there, but I picked up an idea and uh, I Googled it up, uh, tried the BC one, what, what, it, what it does at the end, and the idea was born. So how to incorporate that into our world? So model-driven apps definitely need that because it's, pretty cool feature and how to achieve that. Should I do some kind of solution that you import in Dynamics and uh, do it that way? Or maybe do something like uh, we are familiar with, like uh, level up our co-pilot uh, for Dynamics implementations. And that's when the idea was born. So I would create an Chromium extension that you will just spin up in your browser and do all the magic things. So basically, what, what you do, you open up the uh, environment that you want to record actions. You uh, start recording into the uh, extension itself. And at the end, uh, you start clicking inside your model-driven app. and. What it basically does, it uh, records your actions. It uh, sniffs the HTTP traffic in the background and extracts the data from the actions that are coming from the Dynamics API and extracts that to permissions uh, needed for action CRUD operations that you're performing inside the app 
And at the end, when you are done with your recording, you just stop the recording and uh, create a role out of it or uh, update existing role if you want to just append uh, the permissions that you've recorded to some role that you already have in your system. So it's pretty basic stuff when you talk about the functionalities, but at the end, I think that it saves a lot, a lot of time when you're trying to create a roles by collecting inside the especially old interface. That that uh, is a really cool idea. I could see that being very helpful for someone that maybe someone that just created the the dev parts of it. Okay, we do this, this, this. We we set the fields here. We configured that, and then uh, hand it off to someone to testing, and the testing person can say, "All right, what roles do I need? Let me go ahead and start recording." And then go through and and create a role for specific to what that is. So um, yeah, so that's going to exactly. grab anything that's being done via the web API or any other browser based data extraction or manipulation. Yeah. But it wouldn't Basically, necessarily at a moment it extracts only CRUD operations on oh, and CRUD. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because a lot of tinkering needs to be done if yeah. I dive deep into the plugins, custom yeah. APIs. I have something in mind how to work it out, but I think I'm still not even close uh, to achieve that because it takes a lot of time. And yes. I did some POCs with my colleagues and trying to do the full stuff, but uh, it takes a really long time. So I need to figure it out how to uh, move that to some background process. And so you can maybe record your actions and revalidate the roles in the background. So everything needed can be captured in the background rather than just straight from the APIs itself that is sniffing in the background. And I love it. I mean, you say it's very simple and basic, but I don't think there's anything basic about sniffing the HTTP traffic that comes from the browser. I mean, I, I mean, I love the word sniffing. So I just want to use the word <laughs> sniffing a lot. Um, so, I mean, sniffing anything in my book is great. Uh, so especially from a browser, from a Chromium extension. So, um, but I, I, what I is amazing is it really does reinforce that best practice of the least privileges. The, the idea of having the least privileges for the user. Because in the past, I've always had to say, right, okay, you, you start off with like a, a, a user role that has nothing. And then you see what happens, what, what goes wrong. You know, you go and try and do the things that you need to do as that user. And you come up against the fact that, oh, I can't see accounts or I, I can't edit this account. Or when I, when I create a new record here, I can't go and create child records. Or, you know, you keep coming up against the blockers that prevent you from doing the particular user process that you're trying to carry out. But it's incredibly time consuming because you've got to, each time you come up against that block, you've got to go back to the user role and adjust it and then go and carry on from the beginning and keep doing it. And the temptation is always to do it the other way around, right? The temptation is always there to start with a role that has full access and remove roles and remove privileges. And you know, that's an anti pattern, right? Because it's no matter how careful you are, you're always going to end up giving more access than that user really requires. And of course, that's, that's, you know, not not doing it um, to the best practice. So I, yeah, so I love the fact that you you are, you're now giving the best of both worlds, because you can have a user that has all of the privileges, but you're then also recording the least privileges, which is cool yeah. in my mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and well, it's I sniffing as well. So the sniffing least privilege good. thing, but yeah, that definitely is a big thing, especially in big organizations where audits are dangerous. <laughs> yeah, because that's what you're doing, right? You're recording the least the least yeah. amount of privileges to do what you've just done in the browser. Yeah, exactly that. So um, how do you choose between user level and business unit level and uh, organizational level permissions? Do you just default to one or basically, the other? Or? Basically today, uh, hmm. it's all rec recording organizational level. So okay. you can adjust it yourself when you have the role there. But I, I plan to add it to extension so you can 
uh, play around with the role straight away there uh, before saving it mm. because it will save you some time because in the older interface, a lot of tweaking, clicking should be done to adjust the role and you will have only the privileges you need on one screen and you can easily change everything there yeah. and adjust your role. But yeah, that's something that will come in future. But you always ask the difficult questions, don't you, Daryl? You always have to go in there with the yeah, difficult, but, like, it's you know, it's podcast, not enough, so. the fact that it sniffs the, the HCT. You've now got to talk about business unit and child and like, you're you know. the one that brought up like the least amount of privileges possible. And that got me thinking, Scott, well, is this organization level <laughs> oh, right, or okay. like user level? Because, you know, so it's, it's, yeah, it's your it's on fault, me. man. It's, it's, all it's all on me. It's all, <laughs> I give you that because it's the 4th of July. Yeah, I'll give you that one. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but so, I mean, isn't there, wasn't there like, um, wasn't there like a, an XM toolbox plugin that decoded security error messages? messages. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it was. It, it's, I'm not sure. I forgot, uh, haven't well, used that for a long time. What was that? Mark or Matt build it? Yeah. We, we need sure, to do some homework it, on that. Something, Darryl, I think. Uh, exception decompiler or something like that. Yeah, because I used to use that a lot when I was doing that kind of exercise to to go through and then decode. You know, you get an error message and then you find out, oh, it's because it's it's got like a yeah, cascade you have operation. Our recommended actions uh, there. Add a privilege of that to this user, and you will be good, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. That that was that was really Might useful. Might be the so, security debugger by Mark Carrington. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it's it. Mark, yeah, uh, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost like having a combination of those two things. Cause then if you've got like, you know, the ability to have that minimum least privileges that kind of gets you off and running with the, the, the basic things that you need to do. And then you, it's almost like, then you need to take it to the next level to say, right. Okay. Now let's push it to the yeah. those edge cases where, okay, well, I am the owner of a record and now you're a owner of a child record. And what happens when I try and do something and it cascades ownership or ca does a cascade of, uh, uh, of, um, you know, deactivation or, you know, all of those edge case things that, that generally crop up when you go live and you've not really thought about them. Um, if you're not careful. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe it's like a, a collab, maybe get, you know, it's also to Mark and, you know, collab with it, because then that would be cool having in your, your, your browser extension, then you could actually then also interpret the error message that comes up and then actually add that to the role as well. Yeah. That's exactly the next step that I'm trying to do that. I had some tests, but, uh, I already got homework. Finished. I love it. <laughs> uh, what I did there, so uh, I was recording everything that was in the front end and then trying to recreate stuff with a user without a security role. Uh -huh. So basically what, what I was doing there, so I created, a, I, I pick a user without a role. I create some dummy role that has no permissions at all. And then I try to reproduce the steps that were recorded with that user. And the catch is I don't want to create the record that was created if I don't have the enough privileges. So that's why I use transaction. So I always had one request to the original one that is failing with some error. And uh, I try to execute that as a transaction as long as I uh, get only one error, which is the one in the transaction. So basically that way I isolate everything and get only the privileges to that unrolled user that are needed for the action that is executed in the first step of that transaction. So basically what I do there, I add role, I add privileges to that role, privilege by privilege, and I execute the request over and over again until I get everything set up on that role. And when everything is successful, then I move on to another step, but it takes a lot of, lot of time that mm. That's the problem. It cannot be processed live 
because you can imagine if you need 20 privileges for one create mm. that has four plugins on it and you need to re-run uh, every time when you add new privilege to get the next one because you're getting only one uh, error at a time ex exception there so yeah i'm still figuring out how to move that somewhere else to the background so probably just record the actions and then click check every privilege and then mm. it will deep scan mm. every single action that is recorded and get all the privileges needed there Whoa. So, so that's the whole idea of the process that i'm working on but i'm still not there so it's a multibus yeah. that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> really, really, Scott, you cannot, can't let yeah, MCU go today, huh? It's all, it's all there. Uh, um, so, yeah, this were, this is way more complicated than I thought it was. And so I was assuming you would just go, all right, what 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 CRUD operations have been sent? All right, you wanted to create this entity, so you need this create operation. Oh, you wanted to read this one, so you need this read. But you're doing like, hey, if you're doing a create, let me try to do that as a part of a transaction. Catch any errors that happen and then look through the errors and see what role is required and then add that role to this temporary role that I have created and then keep on trying again. That way, if there happens to be four or five roles and that way, even you are catching if there are other plugins that are running that are requiring additional additional um, additional uh, power, not power, uh, traditional additional words. And I'm pulling the Joe Biden here. Uh, additional uh, rights. There we go. Rights. I could think of rights for some reason, um, man. Um, and then it would uh, those rights of permissions, and that would actually be able to uh, to catch those all in one uh, one go from the user perspective. Even though you're having to sit there and try over and over again each and every time, right? Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. That's uh, exactly yeah. that. And that's so, so when's that going to be done then? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how it works now, isn't it? Or is that is that how you're looking to make it work? Right now, it's the way that I assume. No, it uh, it, now it only works with CRUD operations. So get is read. And I yeah. just transition HTTP message to the privilege needed. All right, you're just recording. The, okay, that. so you're doing it the way that I assumed you were doing it, and yeah, so yeah. you're looking to do it this way. Okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah, that that because that would then catch all that stuff. Because I was like, how do you, how do you catch the server side stuff? That doesn't make any sense to me. But now <laughs> you said that, yes. Okay, great. Now I see how you can catch the, the server side uh, methodology for doing that. Okay, that's a, that's a cool idea. Yeah, but it's like a it. really long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah absolutely and I, I suppose it's it's just kind of like one of those things of diminishing returns isn't it because it's like now you know it's like well how how much effort do you go through to to minimize the that possibility of getting to the situation whereby you've got a yeah edge case that you haven't quite thought about because that's what you're trying to do here is like you're yeah, trying but to create it's like not a, an edge case if i have a create plugin it's not an edge case. It's no, it's true. Normal it's work true. that I need to catch. So yeah. or a synchronous that's workflow. The biggest thing here. So everybody uses plugins, but at the moment I can read privileges from plugins. Yeah. Now yeah. I try to do that. So yeah. yeah. What about if they happen to have some JavaScript that's executing like a custom API that requires a rights on that as well? Are you checking for that stuff at all? Or are you just doing CRUD operations? You're sniffing and then it wrapping that yeah, in the transaction. Yeah, I'm just ignoring the stuff because as I said, yeah. I'm not doing the server side at the moment, but when well, I implement the server side thing, it will just be as easy as the normal create one because it's almost the same. You post something and get an error and decrypt the errors and that's all you need mm -hmm. to do at the end. Now, would you yes. sniff the JavaScript? uh calls as well i mean you're calling you is there any difference between the browser uh calls that are being made in the model driven app compared to any web api calls that are being made from javascript yeah, the, that, that's only a web api so if mm. you're yeah thinking, so would it work for javascript type really stuff as well same, yeah yeah and then this, this is also working canvas apps too right there's no reason why it wouldn't right somebody asked about canvas apps and i was like yeah it's not there uh, yet, but I, I don't think it will work. I'm not sure wh what a canvas is using at all. When it's a different, different request type, probably. If I it, sniff the, uh, the queries, 
on Canvas app, I'm not sure I can get it. How many times can we say sniff in this episode? I wonder. <laughs> um, I, I didn't it used to the the Dataverse connector in Canvas apps used to do it through the kind of like the the endpoint the canvas apps endpoint that all the other connectors use but now it uses the a native dataverse call so i think it might just i mean it's worthwhile trying because because if you look at the way it's a web api call, right? okay. tried it in canvas and it's not working so okay. i think that something is different mm. because otherwise it will work yeah, yeah. But if you look at the way it, when it interacts with Dataverse, it's making standard web API calls. Uh, it's just that there's probably Maybe the gateway it's using. Yeah, the gateway it's using is probably slightly different. So yeah. it's worthwhile because it might be very easy to, because that, that would be really just awesome if it works in Canvas apps as well, because conceptually there's no difference. Um, you know, because you still want to be able to. Conceptually, it feels like there should be no difference. <laughs> yeah, well, there the, the used to be a big difference, but now you, when you look at the the, the network trace, because that's how I debug Canvas apps, like for mm -hmm. delegation and all those kind of things, making sure that when you make your, you're doing your filters and stuff, it is actually doing the right queries. And yeah. you look at it, it's just a standard web API, web API call. So might be cool. So uh, I have to ask, Bad Blue Boys Zag Zagrib Zagrib. <laughs> what is that? that? That's this is an Ivan shirt for those that aren't watching this yeah. visual. Here. Last time I was wearing Dynamo Zagreb shirt, and today okay. that's an Altres of Dynamo Zagreb. So basically, a football Altres fair firm of okay. Dynamo Zagreb is called Bad Blue Boys. Bad Blue Boys. All right. I just think of the cops theme. Do you ever do you get cops in Croatia oh, at all? Soccer here, you know. Yeah. Or as right. I say, football. Yes. Just to be clear, yes. football <laughs> exactly. <laughs> did did they did they have like a? I mean, they need to be playing the Bad Boys song from from Cops at the at the, the games there. I think. If, if you, do you know that song, Mister DJ? Yeah, the Bad Boys, yeah. Bad Boys. What you're gonna do? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we need to, need to think about that for them. Not that you're in control of that. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I happen to be. Uh, I was told by my daughter. Um, now that she's old enough to tell me what I can or cannot wear, um, uh, that uh, I needed I needed new shirts. So for my my birthday, they got me new shirts. I'm happy to be wearing happy to be wearing one. I think it's a really good nerd shirt. So I'm gonna leave it you guys since we read it here. But it says, I turn coffee into gold. And, yep, and it's all on ones and zeros. So it's very yes. very nerdy, very nerd approved. I appreciate mm. it. Caffeine into uh, code machine. That's what you are. Yes. 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 Is any <laughs> other dev? That's the thing by the dads, you know, coffee and pizza. We turn that into code. Yeah. <laughs> you don't, you don't see that a lot in the movies the right? as well. <laughs> <It's> like, <Yeah. laughs> Although I have seen a fair number of devs that are Mountain Dew rather than coffee as their caffeine intake of choice. I don't know. Yes. It seems to be. Yeah. It doesn't really matter what the medium coffee. is, the yes. sub, the substrate that you're using to, <laughs> the, to the actually, drug of choice. Yeah. Some people may even <laughs> sniff it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? It's like the blind caffeine test. It's like, well, what, what exactly is this that's carrying the caffeine? I don't care what it is. Just drink it. <laughs> so, so we've talked to like, you're already covering the 80% scenario, Ivan, with, with what you have right now. And we're, we've been spending a lot of time because uh, I think we're problem solvers of how do we get that last 10, last 20% of the code. So um, hopefully I didn't feel like a, this is useless. Like, no, no this, this, this does a, a huge part, just what you got. Um, and then that last uh, 10 to 20% is kind of an interesting problem. So hopefully, hopefully you didn't feel like that was a, an attack or yeah, saying it was like, okay. I feel felt about the flow execution history at a, at the start. I was like, yeah, nobody will use it. I was the same with that roles part because only CRUD operations without append, for example, too, mm. uh, is not that useful. But when the colleagues tried it and uh, do some re real examples, they told it they saved a lot of time doing that. Mm -hmm. But I was like, yeah, but you know, we need that plugin part to take in play because without that, it's not doing everything. And it needs to do everything for you. I was surprised when I uh, opened up the the security role editor and realized, oh, they've got a new one in here. I didn't check that out in the release notes at all. And then I was like, oh, wait, this is bad because I can't 
I can't click the name of it and get all of them to go to, to get highlighted at once. I've got to go back to, to clicking them once at a time. I was like, oh no, it looks pretty, but it's less functional in that case. No, I hate, hate that hit that thing. So I here's maybe... the mind blown uh, kind of scenario where you kind of show people that have been using the role editor for a, for a long time. And you say, you know, yes. that you can do this. And they're like, wait, what? <laughs> Why did no one ever tell me that you could do this? <laughs> and now we're just taking it away. So no one can do it anyway. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now no one, we don't get to do that. We don't get to blow their minds anymore. That was always a fun part. right? I know. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, I have a theory that the people who designed the role editor didn't know about it either. <laughs> really the devs yeah, just put it in theory. there because they got tired of testing it the, the one by one like i'm just going to do this for myself but I, I i believe it that makes sense yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i don't think the ui guy thought about it because it's pretty unintuitive but then once you figure it out it's very intuitive it's just, you just never know you never notice it yeah it's like a yeah, it's like a nintendo like hidden secret thing like like a Legend of Zelda, where you could, you know, you spend all your time. Once you find, once you once you realize you can burn one of those trees in the original Legend of Zelda, then you go around like burning all the trees, trying to figure out. You even have like hidden hidden secrets behind behind the trees. So it's the same thing. You just start start clicking and everything. Maybe something else does something I don't know about. You can't talk about burning trees. It's, it's not good. You know, this this day, this day and age, don't talk about. You know, we'll we'll get we'll get blacklisted or something. This is a podcast about burning trees. They're eight bit <laughs> trees. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> So the Business Central plugin, I have to ask, how does that work? The Business Central, uh, you know, so you've talked about how you're going to do it in in Power Platform, and specifically in Dataverse, but how does it work in Business Central? Because you know, if they're doing it, are they doing like the cascade operations and plugins? And you know, if you've got like an X plus uh, plus operation that you've you know stored procedure that you've written, does it work with that as well? Uh... It is uh, straight out of the box. No, X plus plus, whatever so you write. Yeah. When, when you enter their security part, it's called permission sets or something like that. And uh, when you open up a new permission set, you have an option start. And it starts recording your session. And when, when it's recording your session, it basically um, adds new rows for each action you take inside the BC. And at the end, you have everything there in the permission set. Uh, you can scroll through it. You have, uh, like, they have something like actions. I'm not sure how it's called, but uh, they have something that it's custom event, uh, labeled custom event. But in custom event, you all uh, also have permissions there. So basically, they are. Uh, taking everything, I think. Mm. As I said, I have no business central experience no, other than that. So, we yeah, don't I'm either. I'm not sure <laughs> if it uh, gets everything, but it looks it does everything because it's made by Microsoft. So basically, they can do it in background. And there is some loading spinners there. So probably they are doing the same thing to wait to get all the permissions needed for every action because i've been doing some um digging recently in some for a, uh, a sort of one solution that i'm working with and i've been using a bit of a kind of a goes back to i think it's 2021 i think it was from from Jonas the canary plugin that he did i remember him talking to me about it on mvp summit and he was like hey do you think this is a this would be a great idea and i was like yeah that sounds amazing and basically what it does is just a plugin that you in well, so it, it's a, a solution you install and it registers a plugin on loads and loads of different messages so you know on retrieve and create and, and update and delete and all those kind of things and also some various other things like uh it, you well it used to register them on um dynamics messages but i don't think the latest version does to make it just work with standard dataverse but you can actually go into the plugin registration tool and you can register it on any steps any message uh messages that you want so you could record re register on retrieve multiple or whatever but basically what that does is that writes to the plugin trace log it writes a sort of like a serialized message of what's happening there and so I'm wondering if you could do something similar like that, you know, like have some kind of correlation, you know, user ID correlation that, that then you do an operation and it kind of records it into the trace log and then you read the trace log back and then you get all of your 
operations that have actually happened and then you extract from that what particular security roles that you would need to to do so that sounds to me something that's similar to what what business central is doing yeah probably something like that a solution that's w w what i was thinking about should it be a solution or an add-in i choose add-in because of the mm. front end stuff but maybe it will need some back end stuff or you can always do everything in front end but i'm not sure will it end well because if it uh, fails halfway through it is like exploded and you need to run it all over again so yeah maybe the background stuff with a solution and with plugins there could make sense but yeah the, the, the drawback of it is you can't get the order of things that happen so because the trace log uh shipping it ships the trace log into the from the sandboxes that your plugins yeah. it ships them into the trace log in a in a in asynchronous way so for performance reasons i guess um there's no sort of sequential correlation so you, so you don't necessarily know that one thing happened you know generally the timestamp is pretty accurate but if it's if it's happening really really close to each other you don't necessarily know which one happened before the other um, but I I find it very useful. I I still use so thank you, Janice, if you're watching. I still find that solution really really helpful in understanding what's happening in the back end. Have you seen his new updates to the plug and trace viewer, where now he looks and reads all the GUIDs, and mm. then you have now links you can click on and open up the record directly in in your environment, which is kind of yes. a neat little feature. Yeah, um, I was using that yesterday actually. It was very cool. You went yeah. through and uh, used some of the things that I some of the formatting I use in some of my plugin base classes, he included that as well. So that was uh, really, really nice. He goes off and, and copies other people's or not copies. He, he um, uh, interacts with other people's uh, uh, methodologies and, and functions of formatting and, and uses it as well. So that was pretty cool. Well, Ivan, uh, anything else you're working on uh, or anything else coming down the pipe we need to be aware of? Uh, anything else that uh, our listeners should know? I mean, uh, I, I realize this is your third time on now because you were way back in the day, episode 26 with the PCF generation, and yeah. then recently in episode 103. So uh, so in the last, uh, the top 100 episodes, you've been on here more than anybody else. So, which is, it's <laughs> two. I mean, it's not crazy, but anyway, you know, it's one more than all the other guests we've had. So in the top 100. <laughs> One by one, one by one. <laughs> yeah, I need I need to make something spectacular to make it two, maybe. But yeah, <laughs> you're always making things spectacular. I mean, it's it's what you do. So you know, that's why. Yeah, at <laughs> least they try. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's half the it's half the. You know, if you ever try to make anything spectacular, you rarely you ever do. Yeah. So uh, you got to at least try. Nowadays, I had a big problem with my blog recently because uh, I was. Uh, presented with an invoice from the Bluehost hosting, like three times uh, a more expensive than previous one. And I was like, you know, I will not pay for that. So I need to do something with my blog. So I had a little mm -hmm. project to refactor everything, move to the different technology. I was using WordPress and I was like, yeah, I don't know WordPress. PHP is not my language, so I spent uh, evening to get everything set up, and I changed my whole blog to Next.js and uh, the new uh, static page generation. So yeah, it's pretty cool now, and it okay. doesn't cost anything because it's on a free plan now. So I saved a lot of bucks that way. Uh, my my blog is from like the nineteen nineties, I think, because uh, it's. It's an old Google whatever blogspot thing. I, it, it never cost me a penny, and it looks like it never cost me a penny. So, but it does contain <laughs> all the the old Daryl information that I know. Like you know, I, I wasn't aware of this tool that like would read the error log and give you with the rights you need. Because I wrote a blog post back in the day that's like this is how you read the error log. And so whenever I get the error log, I say, oh yeah, I got a blog on that. I look back and, and look at, it and, oh yeah, okay, so this is the rights that I need. So. Um, yeah, interesting. So, uh, so you have a free way to do it. If I ever decide to get off my blog and actually have a great, a nicer looking blog, I'd like to. Yeah, to I, reach I wouldn't out to do that. that. I was like uh, waiting. Should I go with it? Last time I had to renew because they increased the price, but this time it was just ridiculous. So hmm. I made a radical move and 
just ditch them off and go from the scratch and create everything from the zero. I have markdown files for my blog posts, but are the, other than that is from the scratch. So yeah. Cool. So which, which static website hosting are you using? Are you using Azure static sites or? Uh, at the moment, uh, I'm using uh, Vercel because uh, of the image optimization, because it uh, uses less bandwidth. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I struggle with the bandwidth part, I would go with Azure static one. So yeah. Neat. Cool. All right. Have to go and check it out, definitely. And we'll put a link in the show notes as well, so everyone can go. And so your your bandwidth usage utilization is obviously going to go through the roof. Uh, yes. So because you know, our thousands and thousands of listeners are all going to go and check it out at once, and you'll get this yeah <laughs> huge spike. <laughs> and then it will go down, as usual. So <laughs> not a big deal. There is a plenty of bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty generous with a plan. So all right. At what point in time, Scott, do we start making jokes about how, how we don't have that <laughs> like, do we, do, Never. Do we need like like 500 people per episode or something? Like what, what do we, when do we decide that, that's, that we're no longer <sighs> small potatoes? I, I don't know. I, do we need to set a limit? I think it's, uh, well, I, I'm never going to make this, stop making the joke. You know, it keeps us, it keeps it real. <laughs> I mean, yeah. keeps us keeps <laughs> humble. Yeah. Yes. So let's yeah. do it. Uh, well, Ivan, I hope you enjoy the rest of your holiday. Thanks for uh, for coming on the show. And, and few days and, left, uh, so yeah, I definitely should, at least. <laughs> yes, yes, I hope we do. Uh, and uh, thanks for sharing your, your your tool you created. It was pretty much exactly what I thought it was. I was like, is this what that really is? Because that would be really cool if it was. And yes, it is. So that's great. Uh, Power rules. Uh, it's a great tool to throw in our, our tool belt for, for everybody. Devs, non-devs alike. Um, yeah, I can see lots of people, lots of different... Um, users looking to use that and uh and yeah so good luck with the re rewriting rewriting recreating of your blog hopefully you've uh, you have no bugs in it and you never have to spend uh a saturday evening fixing something that uh you bugs in blog it doesn't matter it's static doesn't matter. It's static <laughs> yeah that's one of the advantages of static what's going to go wrong yeah <laughs> if it's generated the right way you shouldn't touch it anymore yeah it is working yeah yeah but all right. Um, well, Ivan, if our listeners want to get a hold of you, what's the best way to get a hold of you and let them know, hey, they love the power rules or, hey, they want you to do this or, hey, I think the best be way to reach DJ. out is LinkedIn. But mm -hmm. of course, you can go Twitter or an X, uh, X. or you can go with an old fashioned email and email me any anything you want. If you have any kind of question, I'm happy here to ask, uh, right. to answer your questions. So feel free to bombard me with your questions. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, Scott, that's how our, our listeners can get hold of Ivan. How can our listeners get a hold of us? Well, if you want to bombard us uh, with, with anything, not that we ever get bombarded by anything, um, but if you do, it, we would love to hear from you. You can get us hold of us on old-fashioned email at cast at xrmtoolbox.com um, or socials at xrmtoolcast. And um, yeah, go and check out Power Roles. Uh, it's, yeah, it looks it looks like a fantastic tool. Um, and I'm definitely going to be uh, watching the space to see how it moves forward um, with uh, the multiverse. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing how much it sniffs as well. Uh, so, <laughs> and it's been great to talk to you again as well that's going to be that's going to be scott's new tagline in his next tool it doesn't suck it sniffs <laughs> <laughs> the <way it> <laughs> great uh, note to finish on there yes <laughs> that's the that's the high to, to, to finish on there isn't it <laughs> it doesn't suck it sniffs <laughs> yeah. please can you put that on the website <laughs> Uh. <laughs> all right i'll write that down it doesn't knock us this okay all right well anyway uh have a great day gentlemen it's great talking to you and uh cheers yeah you do guys see you soon cheers Bye. this has been the xrm toolcast with daryl labar and scott Durrell. produced 
by Lynn Zewin. If you have any questions or suggestions, please send them to cast at xrmtoolbox.com, tweet at xrmtoolcast, or hit us up on our LinkedIn XRM Toolcast page.